Introducing the One Click Control Rig. With this free plugin, you can add animations to any 3D character and design your own action scenes in Unreal Engine 5. And don't worry, you don't have to rig, model, or animate anything yourself. Just follow along and I'll show you how to start with any 3D model and end by creating our own action scene from scratch. Download the One Click Rig right now at unrealforvfx.com slash rig. You can get started with any 3D model that you can find online. My favorite resources for this are ArtStation, TurboSquid, and CG Trader. But as long as you have a .fbx or .obj file, you're ready to get started. I'll leave a link down below for one of my favorite creators on ArtStation, Random Things, who has hundreds of different characters that you can add into your scene. Now there's a couple things you should know to guarantee that everything's gonna work when you import this model into Mixamo.com. The first is we wanna remove any rig associated with this character. We want Mixamo to completely replace any existing rig, so all we're gonna do in Blender is remove it. To do this, I'm just gonna take our original mesh right here, and I'm gonna drag it outside of the hierarchy of this armature. Armature is just a rig inside of Blender, so if I bring it outside of that scene collection, that'll separate it from our rig, and then I'm gonna delete the entire rig so there's no chance that we export the rig with this file. And as a last step, I'm gonna remove this armature modifier right here. Now our model is prepped, and we just wanna make sure that the height of our character is correct before we transfer it over to Mixamo. Just click on this little ruler icon, which is the measuring tool inside of Blender. I'm gonna to go to the front Y axis view, and now I can just click and drag with the measuring tool to see exactly how tall our character is. Someone who's six feet tall would be 1.82 meters tall. So if we wanna make them six feet, let's set this to 1.82. And then we'll grab our character and press the S key to scale them up. Now our character should be ready to export over to Mixamo.com. Let's select our character and make sure there's no rig attached. Now let's go to File, Export, and we can export this as a .fbx file. I'm gonna limit this export to selected objects only, and we're ready to export this out. Otherwise, if you're experiencing any issues, you can also export this as a .obj file. I've never had any issues importing a .obj file. The one thing I've found is that you wanna multiply the scale of your scene by 10 units before we export it over into Mixamo. So now let's upload our 3D character to Mixamo.com. Just log into Mixamo.com and make a free Adobe account if you don't have one already. Now on the right side, let's upload our character. So I'll just click and drag our character and upload them to Mixamo. Now let's use their auto rigger tool to generate a rig for free. Just line up the chin, wrists, elbows, knees, and groin. And depending on your character, you can select the detail of your hands. For simpler characters, you might only need two fingers to set up all the animations you need for a character like Yoshi or Mario. You can select three fingers for characters like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles or use the standard skeleton. Then press next and Mixmo will go ahead and generate our rig. And now look around your character and verify that everything's working together from the hands to the legs. Then press next and let's start adding some animations to our character. Now we can find any animations for our action scene and preview them directly on our character. And to download these, just press on the orange download button and export this at 24 frames per second and press download. So search through Mixamo's library of animations and you can type in things like rifle to find a bunch of animations of a character already holding a gun. And for any running animations, just make sure to check this in place motion, which will make it easier to edit these when we bring them into Unreal. You can also search for animation packs, which will have 10 to 40 different animations that are all combined together. And there's packs like this shooter pack or a light rifle pack or any of these to get started fast inside of Unreal. Now let's walk through how to import our characters from Mixamo.com into Unreal Engine 5. Let's just take our FBX file that we got from Mixamo.com and drag it into our content browser. And now we'll get our FBX import options. Now, the first time you import a character, we want to tell Unreal that yes, we have a skeletal mesh, which is just a 3D object with a skeleton or a rig. We want to import the mesh, which we only want to enable the first time we import a character. And let's leave this skeleton blank, which will tell Unreal to create a brand new skeleton for us. Lastly, just scroll down and make sure import animations is checked, which it will be by default. And we're ready to import all. Now let's double click on our new skeletal mesh and this is our main homepage for our characters. Underneath here is where we can assign our default materials and we can verify that we have that exact rig from Mixamo.com. It's really important you have the exact same naming conventions from here on out, otherwise the control rig won't work. We can also verify that our animation was imported correctly. 
And lastly, just click and drag your character into your shot. Now to add animations, we wanna create a level sequence or a timeline where we can add in our animations just like in After Effects or any editing software. Then we'll click and drag our character from the outliner into Sequencer to add it into our timeline. And now we can add in our animations. And just like that, we've animated our character. Make sure to match up your frame rate over to 24 FPS if you want it to look just like a movie. But let's say we wanna modify this animation. We're happy with how it looks, but we wanna attach things like the hand to the gun or adjust the feet so they don't intersect with the floor. That's where you'll need the one-click control rig. Go to unrealforvfx.com slash rig right now to download the one-click control rig for free. The one-click rig is supported in Unreal 5.3 and beyond, so just find which Unreal version you need, whether it's 5.3 or 5.4, and copy it to your clipboard. And now we wanna paste this into our project, but we can't paste it directly into our content browser. Instead, just right-click on the content folder at the top of your menu, and let's show this in our Explorer, which will open up our Windows File Explorer. And you should find a folder structure that looks just like this. Let's create a brand new folder here and call it Plugins and make sure it's typed in exactly like that with no dashes or hyphens. Let's open that up and then we can paste our plugin inside. Now let's go back into Unreal and to make sure that we can see this in your content browser, go to Settings and make sure Show Plugin Content is enabled. And this will let us find our one-click control rig in our content browser. I'm gonna scroll all the way to the bottom here until I can find my new plugins folder. And let's click inside of here. And now I can find my one click control rig. Now we're not gonna open or edit this directly just yet. We wanna make a duplicate of this and copy it for each character. So I'm gonna copy this into our master chief folder. I like staying organized. So let me rename this to CR underscore master chief. And let's open it up. And lastly, we just need to assign this rig to our character. And this is really easy. Just right click on the background, go down to refresh, and then find your character. And then left click on your character. And now you can see we have our rig assigned to our character. Now the last step, and don't skip over this, is click on the forward solve button, then press compile and save. And this will move our controls into the right spot. And now we can use our control rig inside of Sequencer. We can either right click and bake our existing animation down to a control rig. Just expand your control rig menu, and now you'll have full control over your character with two ways to animate. Inside of Sequencer, they'll be at the very bottom of our controls, and you can see that we have an IK or FK switch for the arms and for the legs. Now, what's the difference between the IK and FK controls? FK controls are good for running and punching animation. So we can rotate any bone across our rig, and you can see that the rotation follows down the chain of bones. With the FK controls, you can only rotate each bone. If you try to move the position of it, we'll see that just this one joint moves and it's not gonna give us a realistic result. But now let's enable the IK controls by toggling on the IK switch, and now we'll get this box controller. Now, we don't have to worry about the rotation of each limb, we can just set the destination or the end point, and Unreal will calculate the position of the arm and the shoulder. This is really great if your character is gripping something like a weapon, especially if we need both hands attached to the right position. That way we can just focus in on the end point for our arms or for our legs. But if you wanna change the bend of any of these limbs, then you just need to modify the pivot. And this way we can start to bend them left or right. This is especially useful if our character is close to the ground and we can simply offset this into 3D space. And this way we can change the bend of the knee. And you can change both of these at any time. Unreal is going to go ahead and bake out both the FK and the IK controls so that you're not locked in to one method or the other. And you can keyframe them and change it at any time. You can also delete the animation track and just create this control rig from scratch. With our control rig added, we can start to pose our character. And if you grab the white controller around our character's waist, you can also offset the center of gravity to add a little bit of a crouching movement or have him stand up. Now just repeat this process for any other character inside your scene. Duplicate the one-click control rig and make a custom control rig for each character. Awesome, so let's show you how to add in some Mixamo animations, string them together, and then easily edit and modify them with the one-click control rig. So let's try to find an animation for Master Chief that makes him feel strong and have him pose at the end. 
If you go to Mixamo.com, you can type in rifle and find a bunch of cool animations where that character is already holding a rifle, which will really help us out. And I found this animation called Rifle Kneel to Stand. I'm also going to download an idle animation, which will be Master Chief holding a rifle in place with some simple keep alive animation. So now I can take that animation and just drag it into our content browser. And because we've already set up our character, we don't need to import the mesh. We just want to import the animation itself and just assign it to the skeleton of your character. And we'll press import all. So let's add that animation. I'll type in kneel to stand and we'll slide this to the front. Cool. So we have something to start it off, but we need to transition it into this rifle idle animation and we can just line that up back to back. You can see there's a bit of a pop when we transition between these two animations. And this is more obvious when we're not looking through our camera. It kind of teleports backwards. So to fix this, we don't need to make some transform keyframes. Let's just make sure to line these up back to back. And instead, I'm gonna move my playhead to cover the last frame of our first clip, kneel to stand. And I'm gonna right click on our second animation and adjust the motion blending options. And we wanna match up this animation and align it with a bone from the previous clip. So I wanna align this with the hip bone of the previous clip. Now when we play through, that teleporting is completely gone. And now you can drag these clips together to start that transition even earlier, which can make for a much smoother looking transition. Now it's still a little bit fast and robotic, and maybe we wanna change the eye line of our character so he's looking off screen to the right. Well now to edit these animations, it's super simple. We're just gonna right click on our skeletal mesh, and because we've assigned our one click control rig, we're going to bake it to that rig. Now it's taken our character and baked everything down to a control rig. So now we can expand on these keyframes and now we have keyframed animation for our entire shot, which means at any point we can simply modify our rig super, super easily. Now Unreal's default animation controls can be a little bit rigid if you're locked into only using the X, Y, and Z rotation. But if you want to click and drag in the center, which can be really nice to modify hands or arms, just go to edit, editor preferences and type in enable arc ball rotate and make sure this is set to true. For this close up, let's click on our head control and that will open up our head control here in sequencer. And now we can see all of the keyframes. Now we don't wanna change the location. We just wanna change the rotation of most of these keyframes, but now we can go through, stretch them sooner or later, or you can click and drag to rotate around and find the exact eye line for your characters. Now, typically, if I wanted to make small, simple animation tweaks without upsetting all of these different keyframes, I can just create an additive track. And instead of replacing any keyframes from the original animation, I can create additive keyframes to do things like offsetting the position of the gun throughout the entire shot. Now, we don't have to worry about anything popping or moving around. We just made a simple tweak like that and it will populate throughout our entire shot. And we can disable this at any time by right-clicking on that animation track and disabling it by making it unactive. So we can always return to our original animation. Now, the last problem here is that our hands aren't aligning on the gun. Now you could use this additive track to align the hands, but when you're swinging and swaying your gun, usually this won't work. We need to find a different way to lock that left hand onto a position of the gun. So I'm gonna hide this additive track here. One really good practice is to right click on this animation track and disable key this section. This will make sure I'm no longer adding any keyframes onto this additive track. They'll all go onto the original track, which we're gonna want for this section. Let's scroll all the way to the bottom of our control rig options. And the one thing I wanna do is I wanna take this left arm and I wanna change it from an FK rig, which is controlled by forward rotation and I wanna change it to an IK rig, which sets an end goal and works backwards to solve the chain with the arm and the elbow. So I can align this to the position of the gun. We'll move this forward and we'll rotate it into the right place. And then all I'm gonna do is add a constraint. So in your animation tab here, as long as you're in animation mode, you can add a new constraint. I'm gonna make sure I select the IK hand control and I'm gonna add a parent constraint and constrain it to our gun. You can see in Sequencer, we've now made a brand new constraint and we have a parent here inside of our viewport. Once this is set up, is now we can move the gun around and our hand will stay attached to the gun. Things like this make it super easy to edit and modify those animations and even add simple keep alive animations like twisting the torso or the head. 
anything that will keep the shot more alive and interesting. I'd highly recommend modifying your animations through the lens of your camera. It's something really cool that you can only do inside of Unreal Engine. Just press Shift C or lock your viewport to the camera cut right here. And now you can't move that camera while you're editing your animations. But now we can design our shot with the lights, with the character, with the rigs and everything together to bring our shots to the next level. And this is super powerful for your short films and animations. Now I love using these constraints because it keeps your animation dynamic while you're working in your viewport. But one thing you should know is that these don't always play nice when you go to render out. If you want to guarantee that what you're seeing in the viewport is exactly what we'll render out later, we want to take this constraint and bake it out to keyframes. And this is really easy to do. It's right here and available under the constraints tab. Just click on bake underneath here and bake down your constraints and then make any final tweaks to polish off your animation. So download your favorite characters and use the one click control rig to make your own action scenes from scratch entirely in Unreal Engine 5. And if you're new to Unreal Engine or you're struggling to piece the entire workflow together, check out Unreal Fundamentals. We'll take you from a complete beginner to making your own films in Unreal 5 in just 30 minutes a day. Check it out at unrealforvfx.com slash fundamentals. Subscribe to the channel for more Unreal and filmmaking videos just like this, and I'll make sure to see you in the next video. Peace.